Okay, we're recording this video on Monday, the 5th of October 2020. It is 6.02 a.m. Chicago time. Hope you're doing well. Thought I'd record a very quick video on how I organize my trade station charts. This might be of uh, help to you. Not setting myself up as any kind of a role model here in terms of perfect behavior when it comes to uh, charts, but uh, you know, this is the system that I've kind of come up with over the years for organizing uh, my charts. And uh, the thought about doing a video on this was just prompted by me updating an article on the website uh, this weekend, which is called 18 Time Saving Tips for TradeStation. And I'll uh, link to this in uh, the description of this video. Um, there's a bunch of kind of ideas here that aren't really specific to TradeStation only. Some of the instructions are specific to TradeStation only, but the ideas I'm sure you could use in a whole bunch of different charting platforms because they're fairly similar in many respects in terms of functionality and so on. But there's this one uh, kind of suggestion that I have about why you need to rationalize and standardize your charts regularly. I don't know if you're anything like me, you kind of keep adding to charts and adding to charts and after a while you've got, you know, uh, dozens if not uh, more. I have about 158, I counted, uh, charts, 114 that I look on a regular basis, so that's quite a few. But um, my suggestion is that you should be rationalizing those charts on a regular basis and going through and making things kind of as easy as possible to read your charts on a, uh, a regular basis and to get through them quickly. So uh, in this article, uh, I just kind of say, I think this is a good idea to do on a regular basis. And I thought I would just include how I happen to do it. So uh, this looks uh, like some kind of dreadful modern art uh, here, but on a big screen this looks perfectly okay. And what I have here is 24 charts, uh, little charts, tick bar charts. And to give you an idea of the breadth of the market that I'm trying to cover with all of the uh, charts that I have. And I basically see the world in three different kind of ways. The first one is in terms of foreign exchange and currencies and what the different currencies are doing, particularly against the US dollar. So that's the first kind of view of the world. The second view of the world is kind of the major assets, which are obviously kind of equities, bonds, commodities, crude, copper, uh, silver and gold, uh, very important kind of asset classes. And then lastly, I like looking at some of the commodity futures markets, not just the ags, but a whole bunch of different markets markets on that side. And these charts are roughly arranged. This group of six is uh, looking at the Forex markets. There's a group here of five uh, charts here looking at those asset classes. And on the right hand side, there's six plus one, seven, looking at those commodity markets. So in terms of Forex charts, I'm looking at the Euro, the Japanese Yen, British Pound, Aussie Dollar, Canadian Dollar, Swiss Franc, Mexican Preso. And I actually include Bitcoin in there. You know, debatable whether you see Bitcoin as a currency or an asset, but it's kind of there. It's beside the asset classes. So you might might kind of uh, argue it's it's uh, got one foot in both camps, but that's a way of looking at the world here. The second grouping in the middle here is all the asset classes. We've got the E-mini, we've got 10-year bonds, we've got gold and silver, and then crude oil, natural gas, and copper as kind of the most important kind of commodity markets. And then on the right-hand side here, we've got each of these kind of uh, commodity future markets, which are a little bit more uh, esoteric. We've got the uh, softs, so we've got uh, soybeans, we've got corn, we've got wheat, uh, then some odd ones, uh, lean hogs and live cattle. Uh, right here. And then this is sugar, coffee, cocoa, and cotton. And those are kind of the major markets. Sometimes I like looking at orange juice as well, but it's a very thinly traded uh, kind of futures market. And plus, it's also driven a lot by you know, weather uh, news out of Florida. But anyway, so I see my world in terms of these two, uh, these three uh, views of the world, currencies, asset classes, and then uh, different futures markets. And I kind of arrange my charts uh, in that way. So this is how, when you open your saved charts in TradeStation, this is what they look like. They're all in the My Work folder and they're all kind of organized here. Now I'm still back on TradeStation 9.5 because it, it's working great for me and I haven't moved up to TradeStation 10. Uh, TradeStation 10 looks exactly the same. The coloring's a little bit different, but uh, you know, TradeStation 10 is exactly the same. If I just arrange this so you can see what's kind of going on, the way I arrange my charts. So um, I have them with numbers first, which uh, then kind of puts them in the right order for me. And I'm looking at different 
uh, time frames kind of going all the way up. So the first thing I do is I put my day trading charts here, all numbered zero. Those are the charts I use during the day to do all my day trading on the E-mini. Then I happen to put uh, under number one all of my holdings. So I'm actually holding at the moment uh, gold, British pound, obviously the E-mini um, holding a long-term long position there and Bitcoin long-term long position there as well. So all my holdings are kind of put there. And then the next grouping under number two is a tick bar charts. So two to get them in the right spot, then a big capital T for tick bar charts. And I list all of my tick bar charts here. And I group them again into these three, three groupings. So we've got you know the currencies here, Aussie dollar, all the way up to a Swiss franc here. You can't see it, but it's just off the, uh, the bottom here. We've got crude, uh, crude oil then uh, all the way to um, 30 year bonds. And then lastly, uh, corn uh, all the way to uh, wheat uh, here. And just obviously they're not alphabetical. One space after the T gives me this grouping here. Two spaces after the capital T gives me this grouping here. And then uh, three spaces after the capital T gives me this group. And I have an all uh, chart as well, which is the one I just uh, kind of showed you here. Everything kind of set up in one. So just adding those extra spaces allows you to kind of group things uh, together and then alphabetical kind of uh, after that. Hope that makes sense. Um, then, so from the tick bar charts, we then go to number three, which is the day trading, uh, sorry, the day uh, charts, end of day charts. And again, same kind of thing, got my all um, kind of charts, everything kind of together. And then the currencies, uh, then we've got uh, the uh, asset classes. Here we've got a couple of that extras, DBA and uh, EEM, which is the emerging markets here. Uh, then all the way to 30-year uh, US bonds. And then after that, uh, we've got uh, corn all the way to wheat. So um, that's kind of the way I arranged my markets. I look at the tick bar charts first and then daily charts first. And they're grouped into currencies, assets, and then all the other kind of futures commodity markets. And then I also like to look at some end of day stuff uh, on the E-mini and on the indices. These are some of my favorite charts. This is the 15.45 minute, uh, the 135 minute and the daily chart. And then a whole bunch of different analyses of the uh, E-mini you know, versus bonds versus yen, uh, the sine wave patterns on a whole bunch of different time frames, the average trade size on a whole bunch of time frames and daily range and so on. So that's a little bit of analysis of the E-mini kind of here. And then I like looking at all the indices as well, because you know the equities market is made up of our four major markets, which is the S&P 500, the Russell, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. And there are three ways of looking at each of those uh, markets. You've got the ETF that covers that market, the futures market, and the index itself. And you know, mostly they kind of uh, look the same. The volume patterns can be a little bit different. And you can get insight by looking, for example, at the futures versus the index or so on. So sometimes a signal will pop up on the index chart, but not appear on the ETF chart, for example, like a volume pattern, um, like a, a professional bar and an amateur bar, or a Rambo pattern or something like that. So I like looking at it, all three views of the index, the ETF, the futures, and the ind index itself, and then all four indices. So the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, and the S&P. And then lastly, uh, number six is W, which is weekly. So on a weekly basis, I look at these, I open these charts. Um, they're kind of not super important to me, but uh, just once a week, just kind of uh, look at them to see what's kind of going on. There are some things, some equities that I'm particularly interested in. Here's uh, Camping World and Barrett Gold. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, T0 is another interesting kind of equities chart, but also look at you know rotation on a weekly basis. And then lastly, X, which is basically all the old analyses that I used to find important. And I don't want to delete these charts, but I just want to know they're there just in case I can uh, look them up. Um, I don't know, at some point in time, I was interested in an, an ETF that uh, covered you know the marijuana kind of sector or rare earth or lithiums and so on robotics and ai and and so uh you know it's nice just to have that in the back background but anything that you know has gone from being kind of current analysis to something you know i no longer look at but i don't want to delete that chart just in case kind of refresh my memory or so on just add, add an x to that and it kind of drops to the bottom of the line there so you can you know kind of um, remember that they're there but uh, not check them on a regular basis then uh, two other suggestions. The one is to have a template chart. Let me just uh, open this up. And this is a chart, happens to be set out on Apple, 
uh, but it's my uh, way of looking at the markets in terms of price and volume on the right and the left hand side and that's my default uh, indicators of settings and they're arranged so that these charts are linked, the symbols are linked and the interval is linked so I can change that to you know any particular uh, symbol bang just kind of rolls through and it recalculates those signals for me, uh, the indicators for me uh, on that and I can use that as a template and just save that chart under a particular name. The other thing that you can also do is kind of add the uh, these groupings of indicators as a managed analysis group and let me just show you that here. So on the analysis group I have Pro-Am and Momentum on uh, all these settings kind of saved over here and then sine si wave plus momentum all saved on this chart here. So a left and a right hand chart. So on any chart I could just add um, insert uh, an analysis group it's just off the bottom of the screen there but I could add one of these just add that pro-am it replaces all the uh, analysis techniques and strategies hit OK and it should be exactly the same yeah there we go so it's exactly the same so I can either open up a quick chart and look at it in terms of you know opening the template or I can just add the indicators kind of back on a chart and sometimes if the chart's been corrupted or you've changed some settings on an indicator and you just want to reset the uh, the indicators just insert that analysis group and kind of overwrite the indicators that you, you've got and kind of gets you back to uh, a known kind of initial positioning. So there we go that's how I manage uh, my charts it's kind of working for me and I haven't changed it very much over the last you know year or two sometimes I kind of move these things around a little bit but uh, essentially that whole schema has kind of been fairly consistent for me for a couple of years. I might be following way more markets uh, than you are, so this maybe isn't an issue uh, for you if you're only covering the e-mini or a couple of uh, different Forex kind of contracts. But I'm trying to cover off quite a lot of the uh, kind of tradable world with all of these futures, looking at the Forex contracts, uh, the major asset classes, and all of the futures contracts as well. So that's how I'm managing all of this. So there we go. Uh, looking forward to trading this week. The market's going to be opening up just uh, about an hour and a half's time.